previously on MasterChef Back to Win. There are 20 of you now. The top 20 kicked off. Roll the film. With a trip down memory lane. It looks dreadful. Amanda, that's raw. Let's go. Your challenge is use the dish that sent you home as inspiration for a new dish. That is redemption of all beyond belief. But with the first immunity pin on the line. Congratulations, Emily. Some home cooks couldn't escape their past. This is chocolate milk. It's unedible. The person leaving the competition tonight is Stephen. Tonight, it's the first mystery box of the season. You feeling lucky tonight? And it's a big one. Oh What's up, guys? But you've got to play big bets. No one's ever made homemade filo from scratch. That is major if you're back to win. Oh, my god. Someone's going home tonight. It's not going to be me. What, is she crazy? Oh, my God. Bree, you OK? Oh, no. Please place your apron on your bench and say good night. Our first mystery box challenge. Let's go! Wait, what's with the big one? There's a huge mystery box behind the judges. I'm just praying, please don't be a live animal. I, I already made a promise to my mother that I wasn't going to kill animals on national television. Oh, it's decorated. Oh, Vegas. Hey. Oh. Vegas. Hello, everybody. It's so good to see you all. And good to see you, Emily. Congratulations Thank on you. winning immunity across that last challenge. But Emily. Do not get too comfortable up there, because next time you will be down here cooking. That's right. The immunity pin is up for grabs again tonight. Let's go. The flip side of that, sadly, one of you will be going home. Now, tonight is your first big mystery box challenge. But before you can see what's under those boxes, it's time to see what's under this gigantic one. The last time I cooked in this kitchen was Sean him one, and I didn't. Sean! I came in second place, but at the same time, I am so proud of him. You know, he's traveled the world. He's written his own cookbook. He's living proof of what winning MasterChef can do for a person. Amazing to see you. Goodness oh, me. Oh, chef. <laughs> How's it feel to be back? I mean, it always feels great to step into the MasterChef kitchen. To be back in here and to see so many familiar faces, it's heartwarming. Sean is proof that winning this competition can be used to propel your career to new heights. And he's finally returned to Las Vegas to open up his very own restaurant. Um, first of all, congratulations. Thanks, Chef. And also, let's be honest, Vegas is one of the most competitive cities anywhere on the planet, right? I'm competing against you, so yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> At your restaurant, you struck a chord with cocktails across the menu. How big an influence have they been? I mean, it's Vegas. <laughs> like, alcohol is built into the fabric of Vegas. At Sean's restaurant, the cocktails share the limelight with the food. So this evening, we want you all to embrace the spirit of Las Vegas and use spirits as ingredients in the dishes that you make this evening. Under each mystery box out there, you will find one bottle of alcohol that I have chosen. You must use that as a key ingredient in the dish that you're cooking tonight. Each mystery box has a different bottle of alcohol underneath it. Whichever you get, it's all up to Lady Luck. Wow. Throw that dice. Yeah, Dara, Shane, I know you're not legally allowed to drink alcohol, but you've cooked with it before, right? Yes, Chef. Once or twice. Right. Shall we play a little boozy roulette? Yeah. Yeah. Head to a station. Off we go. Oh, well done. Alejandro, what are you hoping for? Chef, I'm from the island, so I'm going to go spice rum. 
Love that. Shane the Train, what do you think it will be growing up? Are you going to be a gin and tonic man? I have no clue. Right now, I'm a water kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> OK, all of you, on the count of three, lift your mystery boxes. One, two, three, lift. Ooh. I've never even seen this before. <gasps> Brandy, is that limoncello? It's not bourbon. Yeah. Fred, what is that? I have apple brandy. Oh, my goodness me, that is a dream. Dara, what have you got? I have dark rub. I got anise liqueur. I'm not too sure, to be honest, but we got some hazelnut liquor, <laughs> liqueur. Yeah, who's got the tequila? Michael. <laughs> it's a good one. Tonight, you'll have one hour to cook three identical dishes. Right, let's have 60 minutes on the clock. Your time starts. Now! Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Please don't run me over. Yeah, me. <laughs> Green apples. Where's the duck, baby? Where's the duck? Okay, okay. I'm gonna grab some kumquat. Prunes? Prunes. I hit the jackpot. I got bourbon. You can literally go anywhere with bourbon. It offers sweet, smoky, spicy notes. Hey, hey, vomit. Hey, hey, hey. I've gotta use Scotch. What else do I need? I like to drink a nice glass of white wine or champagne. I've never cooked with scotch. I've never tasted scotch. Does it go with something sweet, something savory? I have no idea. But I know one thing. I've got to think of something fast. Today I was lucky enough to get a raspberry liqueur. And I'm going to make a duck breast with that, with a beautiful mashed potato, some fennel, some apple. Raspberries and duck go together, you know? I love wild game. And uh, I plan to deliver today. Looks good, Alejandro. Lots of duck on the menu tonight. The Battle of the Ducks. Battle of the Ducks. She's doing duck too, right? Yeah. We got three ducks in a row. <laughs> Let's rock and roll. So I have hazelnut liqueur, and that is a bit of a curveball. I'm only 18 years old. I can't even drink alcohol. But I'm going to uh, cook it down and burn off all the alcohol. And I know hazelnut has a real nutty flavor, so I'm going to be doing a pork tenderloin with bacon and green beans uh, stir fry with some mashed potatoes, and then to top it off, a uh, hazelnut peppercorn sauce. So I'm just going to make sure that hazelnut flavor comes to play tonight on my plate. Mm, yes. Yes. I got gin. Gin tastes like poison <laughs> to me. <laughs> but once I let it settle, I tasted more floral notes. Mm. I tasted citrus. And I figured that I could work with this. I decided to go ahead and make some pork and peaches. I'm doing pork tenderloin. It's spiced with some coriander, nutmeg, cinnamon, cayenne pepper. I'm just hoping that the judges like it and that it gets me either immunity or saved. 50 minutes remaining. Come on, guys. Let's go. You got this. Plenty of time. First big mystery box challenge. Sean, you're gracing the MasterChef floor once again. Advice. Sweet, savvy, where would you go? I, I use a lot of these different things in the restaurant. Sure. Cognacs and stuff for charcuterie. But I kind of have my eye on the amaretto. Gotcha. Um, I do a great butternut squash ravioli that I reduce down the amaretto to where it's a syrup. Nice, thick, sweet. And it really works with the earthiness of the butternut squash. Looking good. Gordon, what's the uh, secret to cooking with spirits? It's all about burning off that alcohol. And raw alcohol flavor across any, you know, stage of dinner. It's just, it's not pleasant. This is scary. I don't yeah. want to burn my lashes off. You got it. Think of the Jeopardy now. It's not just about one dish, but they're all back to win for a reason. Yeah. For these guys to have the courage to step back in the Master Chef kitchen, you know, anything can happen in here. Uh, you can have a bad day any given day. This is going to be a really interesting tasting. Looking at the apple brandy, I know I can go a couple different routes with it, but my heart is telling me, go with a dessert, and not just any dessert, but something they haven't seen before. I am making a creme pitta, which is a Montenegrin dessert. Creme pitta is made with layers of phyllo and custard, and I'm serving it with a caramel and some flambéed apples. There's a huge risk with what I'm doing here because making phyllo from scratch does take a lot of time, but no one's ever made homemade phyllo in the MasterChef kitchen before. This is like getting there probably three more minutes. Okay. 
However, my track record with mystery boxes is pretty horrible. In fact, I got sent home on the last mystery box I cooked on. It's raw. So I just want to break in my mystery box curse and finally get that redemption. Nice, Fred. Turn into something good. I got limoncello. It tastes like cleaner, like you would clean your countertops with. Awful. I feel completely deflated right now. Uh, I have no idea what I'm going to cook. I definitely know Sean's looking at me right now. I don't want to mess up in front of him, but I've got to get out of my head or like this is what's going to send me home. Oh, that limoncello is rough. When I say rough, I mean rough. Rough, I mean rough. Brandy season seven would see this limoncello, know it's a dessert drink, try to haphazardly pull out some dessert, and it would probably be a disaster. But this Brandy is not gonna let this limoncello get me down. I really like cooking with sweet and savory together, so I'm actually going savory with this super dessert drink tonight. Sean definitely knows what I'm capable of, but I think I'm doing something tonight that he's not gonna expect. 14 minutes gone. Just over 45 minutes remaining. So, Sean, the level of competition this year is at an all-time high. And also, they're battling for immunity. Smelling good in here, guys. This is the best place to be in the kitchen. You know you're going to be here to fight another day. Ah. <laughs> Hi, Dara. What are you making? So, I have dark rum today, and I'm making a tropical tiramisu. I'm making an almond coconut jacon sponge that I'll soak in a dark rum simple syrup. I'm making a mascarpone cream with a strawberry, pineapple, wait, wait, and mango it's, salsa. It sounds like you said three desserts already. Is it a tiramisu or no? Aspects of a tiramisu. You have time to do all this stuff? I hold myself to a high standard, especially with desserts. Um, right. And I... I believe in myself that I can get this done. This spice dark rum has a lot of different things going on. I love it. And how is this going to be interwoven with your dish? Um, it's going to be in a simple syrup. That's will be on the cake. It will be in um, a caramel. I love it. So it's going to be very rum forward. It's very rum forward. You got this. How's it going, Kate? Hey, Sean. And we're using the bourbon, I the see. The bourbon, yes. Tell me about the dish. What are you doing? I'm making a spiced stone fruit cake with a bourbon vanilla bean caramel sauce, a creme fresh chantilly cream, and then some macerated flops. This is the one everybody wanted, right? Yeah, absolutely. I told you I was lucky. And why sweet on a night like tonight? Because bourbon go both ways, right? Yeah. Right. I'm a savory chef. That's mm -hmm. what I know and love and do the most. Yes. But I thought it's not the time to play it safe or stand in the shadow. How are you going to get this cooked in 30 minutes? It's going in. It's so going in one second. I just need to grab my fruit from the blast chiller. Taking risks, so that's what this kitchen's all about. Yeah. I love risks, but look at the time. There's yeah, no. barely 30 yeah. minutes to go. They're not yeah. even in the oven yet. They'll okay. be there. They'll be there. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you both. I have almond liqueur, and I'm doing a profiterole with a almond liqueur pastry cream. And then almond and orange and cardamom cherries. I haven't made this dish before, but it's all flavors I'm used to. My grandparents are Italian, so just trying to pull from those childhood memories. So this isn't a time to play it safe. I'm here to go that one step further and take home that trophy. This is going to be interesting. Lots of baking. Ooh, baby. Freaking beautiful. I got tequila, my favorite thing to drink in the world. I expect a lot of people today to make dessert, so I'm gonna go the opposite. I have this amazing tequila and tamarind sauce that's like sour and sweet and gives that punch of the tequila, so I'm not playing it safe. I'm doing completely wacky, crazy combinations. I don't cook duck every day. It's definitely a risky protein, but if it pays off, I think it'll give me my best chance of getting that immunity pin. 28 minutes, guys, 28 minutes. What is that, Christian? Coconut shrimp? Yes, ma'am. Nice. I love mystery boxes. You know, season five, I actually won a mystery box. I had a filet a Alaskan salmon. I blackened it. They loved it. I won. Christian. 
Get out of here, bro. So today, I'm like, Mr. Buck, let's go. How you guys doing? How you doing, Christian? I'm good, chef. So what good do you job. got for us? Today, I'm making a mezcal tequila coconut bang shrimp. Bang bang is what we call kind of in, in New Orleans. There you, you go. Yeah, when you kind of fry them up and yeah. make them crispy. Yes. And... Mezcal has a, uh, correct me it's very a smoky flavor, right? Yes, so the difference between mezcal and tequila, you take the piña or the root of the actual cactus and you roast that. So how do you plan on burning so it So basically out? what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna burn it off first, and then once I burn it off, I'm gonna fold it into the sauce that I'm making. Alcohol is very strong. So when you're cooking it with food, you don't want that alcohol to overpower your food. Woo! Mezcal flambéed charred limes. Love it. Okay, let's see what's going on so far. Okay, Miss Brand. Hello, how are you Season doing? Season seven alumni. Tell me about the liquor that you got. So I was given limoncello, and I'm doing kind of a fusion dish here. I'm making a sesame soy limoncello glaze for my salmon that needs to come out of the oven now. With a spot prawn grapefruit limoncello ceviche and sauteed lemon garlic bok choi. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sounds yes. like a lot going on there. Yeah. A lot. So I feel like tons of pressure right now. The last dish I cooked in this kitchen was the dish that sent me home. Sure. And today I'm cooking for the person that sent me home. <laughs> it's very intimidating having him here, and I'm just trying to pull out all the stops. Yeah, would you put the raw prawns and cook salmon together? I, I personally wouldn't. Don't overcomplicate this dish. It's gonna be great. Someone's going home tonight. It's not gonna be me. Crush it. No pressure. That's good enough. With this dish, I'm trying to prove that not only can I have a good flavor profile in a dessert, but I want to put fashion on a plate. I was in the bottom three last week, so I've gotta make sure that I'm not in the bottom three again. Tommy, all well, right. Hello. So, what is the dish? I'm, I'm gonna do sweet potato butterscotch praline pie. And where does the scotch come into play? The scotch is in my candied pecans. Gotcha. The scotch is also in my court bouillon poaching liquid for the sweet potatoes. I really like the smell of it. It smells smoky and it smells very fall to me. You're right. This is something that you drink to warm the soul. Tommy, we want to see that eye for aesthetics. You need to put on a show on the plate today. Is that going to play out in your dish? I hope so. Good luck. So, just over 15 minutes remaining. Ugh. Whisk, 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 whisk. Kate's doing a stone fruit bourbon cake. My big worry is the cake wasn't in the oven until just under 30 minutes. I'm not too sure it was going to get it cooked in time. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's not crispy in it. That's got to go back on. So Brandy ended up with the limoncello. She's doing a cooked salmon and a ceviche. Yeah, with limoncello. Yeah. Limoncello is literally a sweet after dinner liqueur. What is she, crazy? So Dara, the liqueur is dark rum and her ambition is very high. She mentioned tiramisu and then she's doing the sponge cake. So many different things that I'm not, I don't think that she really understands it. Yeah, she has a risk of missing some of these elements if she does all that she says she's gonna do. Including a rum caramel sauce, which is fundamental for pulling this together. My caramel sauce, it's crystallized. Dara, show it to me. What's it look it's like? It's like not, it's like... Then don't put it on the plate. If it's not right, don't put it on the plate. Okay. Just keep going. My caramel sauce crystallized. This is a spirits challenge. Majority of my rum is in that caramel sauce. Once it crystallizes in a caramel, it's not gonna uncrystallize. Being in the MasterChef kitchen with these adults is completely different than the juniors competition. And this is all harder than I expected. Oh my God. It's crystallized. Dara, show it to me. What's it look just like? It's like not, it's like... Then don't put it on the plate. If it's not great, don't put it on the plate. Okay. Just keep going. This is a spirits challenge. Majority of my rum is in that caramel sauce. Oh my God. I don't have time to fix the mistake. I can't put it on the plate. Instead of, I just brushed on the rum syrup, and now I just have to hope that there's enough rum soaked into that cake. Oh, my God. Woo, girl! <laughs> Bree, you okay? Damn. We're good. Well, that was a big one. 
I got an herbal liqueur, so I'm making a filet mignon with a chimichurri sauce, roasted red pepper puree, and a lote. So I think the flavors will mesh really well together. Oh my god. There are under 10 minutes left, and two of my ducks are overcooked. Come on, come on, baby. Come on, baby. I'm definitely pretty concerned right now, and Gordon said we need consistency, consistency amongst all three plates. So I have to start over. Okay, okay, okay. All right, guys, so Michael looks like he just overcooked his duck breast. No and way. And he's starting it over. No. That is major. Damn. Nice. Fred, what did you get? This is my apple brandy. So I'm making a take on a Montenegrin dessert called creme pitta. It's homemade phyllo that I infuse with the apple brandy with apple brandy pastry cream. Wait, you're making your own phyllo paste? Yes. Have you stretched it beautifully? Is it super yes. crisp? I got it as thin as I could get it in this time constraint, chef. Then I also did um, the alcohol in a miso apple butterscotch. Wow. And then I'm just going to finish some butter or some apples in that brandy butter as oh, wow. well. That's delicious. Thank you. Ooh, and, uh, um, that is wow, delicious. Bread. Thank you, chef. Is that the flambe? Yes, this is the flambe. Um, if you guys value your eyebrows, okay. Tilt the pan and tilt it. That's it. Yeah. There yeah, we go. No, no. Oh, wait, hold on. Let sorry. it go. Hold on. It's fine. No, it's fine. It's fine. Let it go. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. Once okay. the alcohol burns a off, glass then bowl then on top of the flame. Sorry. That's what you want. I don't do it frequently. <laughs> Good luck, Fred. Thank you, chef. Last five minutes. Here we go. Whoa. Oh, my God. I'm worried about Kate's cakes. They're not even out of the oven yet. Will she cook the cake in time? Yeah. Would you believe Fred's made his own phyllo pastry? Yes. Bravo. If he pulls it off, it could be immunity pin worthy. But I'm just worried time's his issue now. Emily, who's looking good? Uh, a lot of the savory people, I think, are looking good. Christian's doing some coconut shrimp, which looks really interesting. I think he has mezcal, so it's kind of a unique usage. Smart. Shanika's pork looks phenomenal. She just sliced into it, looks great. But I think some people went sweet tonight in order to show their skills and maybe some things are not going right. Well, you got a great view from up there. Sadly, as you know, somebody's going home. Two and a half minutes remaining. Let's go. Let's go, Kate. Oh, my God. My cake is underbaked. Oh, no but I'm very stressed for time, so I have to reroute and get something on the plate. Coming up to 60 seconds, everyone. 60 seconds. This is not, not pretty. I need three plates in 45 seconds, young man. Yes, sir. Let's go. My hands aren't shaking. Your hands are shaking. 25 seconds to go. Matt, that's tight. Chris has got one plate done. Come on, Bridget. This is not what I wanted. Oh, my God. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. That's all. Well done. Good job, guys. How'd you do? Great job. How's it look? Looks beautiful, little bro. I think I cooked it perfectly. You did. I hold myself to such a high standard for this. Me too. You know? I hate, like, I don't want to cry, you know? Yeah. My cake doesn't look good, which reflects on me as a chef. What happened, Kate? And that makes me emotional. But I got everything on the plate, and I'm just hoping the judges see uh, my talent and uh, my potential. I'm just uh, definitely not ready to leave. Tonight, you had to cook with not just the spirits of Vegas, but the amazing spirits under your mystery boxes. Let's take a much closer look at all your dishes. Shane, hazelnut liqueur. Are you happy with this? I feel like I accomplished a lot in this cook. I think it looks good. Thanks, Chef. Dada, do you feel that your dish is complete? There's one element that went wrong, so I decided to keep it off the plate. Okay, thank you. All right, Brandy. 
Every time these judges come around, you never know what they're thinking and you instantly start to doubt yourself. Are you happy with the cook on the fish? I think it's going to be cooked very well. My skin's still really crispy. I definitely think the standards are higher than they've ever been. And did you marinate the shrimp in the mezcal? Yes, Chef. People are putting finale plates up to these judges. So I did a profiterole with a almond liqueur pastry cream. You like them this crunchy, huh? They're not letting little things slide that all of us should know. Are you happy with the plating? Yeah. Yeah? Are you yeah. sure? If you mess up something simple, it's just not going to be pretty. What happened here? Is this raw? Oh, uh, definitely. Is this a deconstructed dish, or did you just rip the top off the muffins? Uh, it's deconstructed, but because it's un undercooked. I flipped it over, and then I just picked the best pieces I wanted. Got it. Fresh apple brandy. Yes. <laughs> I know for a fact that this is not a middle dish. It's a matter of whether or not it lands me in the top three or the bottom three, just given the risk that I took tonight. And what's in the uh, cream? So the cream itself, it's mascarpone vanilla bean. I don't really know what's going through like their heads right now. Like They could love the dish, they could hate the dish. You can't really read it from their faces. Thank you. Some really good dishes there. Absolutely. Interesting mix of sweet and savory. Yeah. Confident? Yeah, good. Ready? Yeah. Sean, thank you so much for curating this yeah. incredible mystery box with amazing spirits. My pleasure, Chef. Emily, you get to spend some very special time now with our season seven winner. All of you, please give it up for Sean and Neil. Thanks, Chef. Thank Take a break up on that balcony. Good luck, guys. Right, let's taste the top dishes of the night. This first dish featured a very uncommon spirit. It really did help bring their seafood to life. Please come forward. Christian. Oh, oh. 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 Remind us what liqueur you got this evening and then describe the dish, please. I got the mezcal. So the dish that I prepared is a coconut bang shrimp served with mezcal, apricot sauce, topped with microgreens. It looks crunchy, crispy, rich. I'm really curious about your sauce. It looks like it has a nice consistency. Can't wait to try it. The shrimp are delicious. I mean, really cooked impeccably. The sauce is intriguing. I think you've hit the jackpot on there with apricot, muscal, and what else? And a little bit of that lime zest. Excellent. Here's the thing. It needs a slaw. Just something else to give that little crunch on there, that's all. Yeah, Christian, I mean, you understood what we were asking you as far as using the spirit in a clever way, as well as capturing the fun and the vibe in Vegas, and this is exactly that. Thank you so much. You're concentrating on flavors. You have good technique. You're just putting really good food on the plate, and I love the honesty in this. Good job. Thank you, Christian. Thank you, Christian. Woo! Good job. Good job. Second dish we want to taste, certainly one of the best desserts of the night. Please come forward. Fred. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Fred, tell us what you made for us. I made a take on a Montenegrin dessert called Trempita, which is made with layers of homemade filo dough with a mascarpone and apple brandy cream, flambéed apples, as well as a miso apple brandy butterscotch. Fred, it looks stunning. You plate with such beautiful finesse. Thank you. Shall we? Yeah. Uh, Fred is exceptional. I love it. I do love the contrast of the crunch, the sweetness, with that miso caramel. It's bloody exceptional, young man. Fred, I love the filo. I can feel all the different layers be kind of bursting in my palate. It shows a lot of technique and understanding of ingredients. Thank you, Chef. I agree with their comments. The filo dough gives a nice neutral base and really exalts all the other flavors on the dish. The apples, which are perfectly roasted and infused with that apple brandy flavor. Very difficult to do. Bravo. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Good job. 
So the final dish that we like to taste from a young lady who pulled out an amazing dish despite her self-doubt and uncertainty. Please come forward, Brandy. It feels great to be in the top three. So Sean here, you know, I'm the only one from his season. He's expecting a lot out of me. I think he's probably pretty proud that I'm being called down right now. Brandy, can you remind us of the spirit that you had to work with? I had limoncello, and I made a cast iron seared salmon glazed with a soy sesame limoncello sauce, a spot prawn limoncello ceviche, and sauteed lemon garlic bok choy. It looks excellent. I love it when you cook salmon in a way that you can almost see mm -hmm. the medium rare. And it looks spot on. Limoncello, one of Joe's favorites. Because I do order limoncello back sometimes. What's in a limoncello back? No, it's like, you know, you, you order a beer and then a whiskey back. So you just, I... like, take a shot of limoncello no, after I... your beer? Yeah. All right. You should try it. <laughs> Look at that. Sean, can you see that up there? Spot on. I had no doubts with brandy and salmon. Thank you, Sean. Our young lady, salmon's cooked perfectly. But the bok choy is exceptional. But doesn't need the shrimp. It just takes you down a different route when you're so excited about that beautiful earthiness for the bok choy. I'm just surprised with the balance of flavor and harmony that you achieved with soy, sesame oil, and limoncello. And you made it work, young lady. Thank it's you. delicious. Congratulations. Thank you. Good job, guys. We need a minute to discuss right now, please. The bok choy and the salmon to mix that lemon jello. No, it's pretty compelling. Yeah, Fred's. That's the most intellectual dish. Yeah. Christian's dish, I just like everything about that dish. Good luck, guys. And the good news is that all three of you are safe from elimination. But most importantly, one of you will receive the beautiful immunity pin. The person that we thought executed the best dish tonight. Congratulations goes to... The person that we thought executed the best dish tonight and deserves this immunity pin. Congratulations goes to... Fred. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. Good job, Fred. Good job, Fred. I won immunity. Oh, my God. I just took a risk in the spirit of Vegas, and it paid off. <laughs> in the form of this pin. You three, congratulations once again. Please make your way up to the balcony. Well done. <laughs> It's back to win. It's a new season, new Fred, and it's indescribable amounts of joy. Good job, buddy. Thank you. I know, I know. That was beautiful. Thank you. Now for the not-so-good news. We now have to taste the bottom three dishes of the evening. And from that, one of you will be going home. The first dish we need to take a much closer look at. Despite being plated well, it really lacked in spirit of flavor they wanted to highlight. Please step down. Dara. No. I was a mess today. My station was a mess. My head was a mess. This dish is a mess. Really disappointing. So, Dara, describe the dish, please. So I had dark rum. I'm in front of you. I have a rum-soaked cake with a mascarpone cream, tropical fruit, and a macadamia nut brittle. I don't see the soaked part of it. It looks dry to me. It's definitely missing a sauce component. It just looks like an incomplete dessert. Dog, the actual flavor of the cake is good, but I can't taste that beautiful spice rum. I don't have to tell you, Dara. You know it's a little bit heavy and greasy. Fruit's OK, but it's not what a cake looks like. It looks like pancakes. The nut brittle is just unedible, and the sponge is very plain. I like the cream, but whipped cream, come on, big deal. It's back to win. Thank you. It's OK, Dara. 
Head of Dara, you still did so much, okay? I can't taste the rum. Yeah, she's uh, better than that. She's much better than that, but when you get too clever, you're gonna trip over. What a shame. The second dish that we want to examine more closely incorporated a very common and rudimentary spirit, but had shockingly poor technique. Please come forward, Kate. I'm definitely disappointed. My presentation is not where I want it to be, but I'm extremely confident in my flavors, and hopefully it's gonna keep me here. Okay, can you remind us of the spirit that you had to work with? I got bourbon underneath my mystery box, and I made a stone fruit spice cake with a bourbon vanilla bean caramel sauce and creme fraiche chantilly cream. Kate, I push you a lot because I see greatness, but this plate reminds me of a dish that's been sent back to the kitchen when someone's finished the dessert. Oh, Kate, I could cry, young lady, because on my plate I've got crispy bits of cake, raw bits of cake, half-cooked bits of cake, and so I'm just, I'm, I'm confused. The caramel is a saving grace. It's actually delicious. But we're not doing a caramel mystery box challenge. I'm, uh, I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed for you. Kate, you had all the makings of a wonderful dessert here. There's just a lot of technical flaws, and I think you know that. But I like the Chantilly cream. I thought it was gonna be grainy, it wasn't. I just get to the heart of the matter. I mean, when you deconstruct a dish to try and hide that the components are undercooked and raw, it's kind of a disaster. Thank you, Kate. Thank you. Okay, the final dish we would like to taste and dissect further. Despite having some intriguing elements, simply fail to meet our level of expectation. Please come forward. Tommy. Again? I've been in the bottom three two weeks in a row. It's not a good feeling at all. I just have to ask you, is this really what it's supposed to look like? It just looks peculiar. I just have to ask you, is this really what it's supposed to look like? Well, when I do sweet potatoes, sometimes I like to melon ball them out so that it doesn't look so unattractive. I gotta say, as a guy who has an eye towards fashion, makes a living in fashion, these colors don't really have any space on this runway. Even the choice of the plate. I mean, you couldn't have picked the worst color, Tommy. Really? Really. What alcohol did you have? I used scotch. Tell us about this dish. This is a sweet potato butterscotch praline tartlet. Should we try? Let's hope it tastes better. Uh, Tommy, if the dish looks a mess, I think of what scotch does to apples, mind-blowing. It's one of the best liqueurs to enhance the dessert, and this is just not very good at all. The scoops look weird, and uh, it's unfinished. Tommy, it tastes better than it looks. I have really nothing else to say except for that. Sorry. Thank you, Chef. Dara, Kate, and Tommy, please give us a minute. We've got some very, very heavy yes. discussions to have. Excuse us. So, Dara. I think that what you saw tonight was her youthfulness. Yeah. Could you taste the rum, though? No. 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 Uh, Kate, on my plate, I had some raw, mm. half cooked bits of that cake on there. It's a shame. Yeah. Uh, Thomas? The execution was off. No? There, there was a lot of errors in it. It's very clear to me. Ron? Yeah. 100%. Oh, my goodness. Dara, Kate, Tommy, all three of you produced three somewhat lacklust dishes tonight. And the person not moving forward in the competition is... Kate. 
heck? Tell me, Dara, head back to your stations. Good job, you guys. I love you, Kate. Keep kicking ass. I love you. <laughs> I'm gonna miss you guys. Kate, I know how much this back to win means to you, but the actual cake was raw and undercooked. And in a panic, you assembled bits and threw them on the plates. Unfortunately, it just didn't work. Please place your apron on your bench and say good night. Thank you. Thank you. Love you, Kate. In season eight, I had the best record of the season. I kicked ass, and I was expecting to be here until the end. It's definitely showing how fierce and cutthroat this season is. The stakes were huge, and the talent was insane. I know I did everything I could have in that 60 minutes. Sometimes it hits the fan, and you just gotta, you know, duck. Bye, Master Chef. I'm gonna miss you guys. I warned you weeks ago, it's the most competitive season yet. Last challenge. We lost a semi-finalist from season six tonight. We lose a semi-finalist from season eight in Kate. So, if you can't tell by now that the bloody slate is clean, coming back to win, you'll never know. Good night. Next time, Ramsey to Ghost Guard, the top 18, take on their first team challenge of the season. You will be feeding the women and men of the US Coast Guard. Uh-oh. <laughs> but with another cook in the firing line. Let's get some child, man! How long are you glad to holler at me? Don't jump shit. It won't be smooth sailing. Where's the potato? We're not ready. Say that again. It's we're stressing we're everybody out. Hey, it's raw. How? <laughs> on the <laughs> floor, and we've just put them back on the grill. No. You're going down, young man. One potato, two potato.